Hey guys, do you know what time it is? Uh, time to find a new dungeon master because in the last skit we kicked his butt out for railroading yep, us. Yes, that sounds about right. Well, well, maybe, but but do you know what else it's time for? Nothing, because per the associate handbook, designating a new dungeon master to fill a vacant position oh. precedes any other activity oh. since D&D cannot be played without a dungeon master. Indeed, why do you keep saying time so oddly? Are you trying to make some sort of harebrained point again? Well, well yeah, this, this video is about time and we're supposed to be introducing the topic of the video in these skits. That's literally what we were hired for. Holy crap, who cares about the stupid video? We need a new dungeon master who can give us monsters that we can go stabby stabby on! I concur. The first order of business is finding a new dungeon master. Now, do we have any volunteers? Nope, not it. <laughs> I'll do it, I'll do it. Pick me, pick me, pick me! Hmm, well, that's too bad. Per standard operating procedure, if no one volunteers to be the dungeon master, the player with the least seniority takes on the role. <laughs> Good luck, Gary. But, but, but you guys, I was volunteering. Didn't you hear me? No. Now, Gary, into the big chair with you. Being the intern really sucks. Ooh. This chair is comfortable. Well, yeah, but now who's gonna fill the vacant player position? I guess we didn't think about Holy that. Holy crap, we suck. Welcome to the DM Layer. I'm Luke Hart, and I've been a dungeon master since high school. On this channel, I give practical dungeon master advice that you can use in your Dungeons and Dragons games. Today in the Layer, we're gonna be talking about time and time-based events. I'll discuss why dungeon masters should be tracking time in their games, give you some practical tips for doing so, and then finally explain how to run time-based events. But first, I want to remind folks that this month's issue of Layer Magazine contains bonus content from the Dungeon Coach. My $15 and above patrons will get a magic tattoo system, several ready-to-go magic tattoos, and three new player subclasses, the Artificer Inksmith, the Bard College of Ink, and the Warlock Ancestral Spirits. This is on top of all the other Dungeon Master resources this issue contains. 10 magic item curses that can be applied to virtually any magic item, five ready-to-go encounters, 10 villains with stat blocks, 10 random tables, and two complete fifth edition adventures, the Worm Witch, designed for level five, and Talakonsky's Revenge, designed for level eight. And these maps are designed specifically for use on virtual tabletops, such as Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds. My patrons get pretty much everything they need to run adventures for their groups. There are, of course, links to my Patreon page down below where you can learn more about Layer Magazine and the other benefits my patrons receive every single month. Why track time? The first thing that tracking time is going to allow you to do is to use time-based events in your game. And we'll get into using time-based events and how to do so a little bit later in this video. Tracking time also enforces the verisimilitude of the game when players can see the time passing. For instance, there's only so many hours in the day for travel, so when it starts getting dark, because you're tracking time and you know when it gets dark, travel gets harder and it could get slower and it might get more dangerous. When the months roll on and the seasons change, the weather changes, there's snow or there's mud, the game feels more real. And a muddy spring and deep snow are also not good for traveling, so that might have game effects as well. When you track time and make it a thing in your game, it adds depth and realism to the game. Tracking time also helps enforce game mechanics. For instance, spells with durations are more of a concern when players can see time passing. So the, the wizard casts mage armor, right? Well, that's great, but mage armor only lasts for eight hours. But if you're not keeping track of time, then <laughs> when does that end? And PCs can only long rest once every 24 hours. But if you don't keep track of time and you don't know when they last long rested, how can you enforce that rule? You could have a prolonged discussion and argument over how much time has passed because, you know, players always want to take that long rest. Tracking time in the game forces the players to consider time when making decisions. Since time passes, some things might be urgent and they'll have to consider that and go do those things before too much time passes. If there is an upcoming event, such as the Fantasy United Nations fun meeting, for instance, on a certain date, they'll need to plan their travel time and adventuring time to make sure they don't miss that meeting. Tracking time 
practical tips. Tracking time isn't really that hard. Once you get into the habit of doing it, it's easy and fast, and it's just something that happens as part of running the game. Here are some tips for tracking time during the game, and this is what I personally do. In person, I have a whiteboard and dry erase marker, and I note down the date and the time at the top of that board. And I'll also jot down on that board any magical effects that the players have in play, the durations when they end. And then during the course of gameplay, I will literally on that whiteboard update the time in increments of 15 and 30 minutes continuously as we play. And all the players can see that whiteboard so they can see the time, they can see the time passing, and they can use that accordingly as they make decisions. I don't get too uptight about tracking exact increments of time and calculating how long it really was. I estimate it, it's okay to estimate and just take ballpark guesses about how much time has passed. Otherwise, you're gonna spend way too much time thinking about the time. Now, if I'm playing online, which I, I do a lot these days, uh, I will just simply type the time and the date in the chat every so often so that players can see time passing in the same way that they could if we had been in person and they were looking at the whiteboard. And then I keep track of the magic effects and the times that they end in my own notebook. Because if you don't track that time, when those magic effects end, how will you and the players know? You'll be guessing. But with time being tracked and visible to all, players are very aware that their spell durations are ticking down. Okay, so that's tracking time day to day as they're adventuring. But what about tracking time over the course of the campaign, which is also an important thing to do. You simply use a calendar. I literally have a calendar in OneNote. It's a table, it has the months, it has the days of the week, and I simply keep notes right there. I mark off the days as they pass. I make reference notes. I will make notes about when they long rested and why. What's the last time they long rested so that I know how much time needs to pass before they need to take or they can take another long rest. I will note when they took their downtime and I will also keep track of important events that happened over the course of gameplay. Sometimes those come in handy. Now sometimes you make these notes in game as things are happening or you could do it after the game when you have more time and aren't also trying to run the game. All right, next tip, keep it simple. Just estimate the passing of time during the game. Don't get too worried about it being precise. It's a half an hour to get to the marketplace. It's two hours to do the shopping. Okay, you're done. Don't create rule mechanics around the passing of time. For instance, giving players a certain number of actions each day or something like that. It needlessly complicates something that really shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> is that really something that players are gonna be like, oh yeah, how many actions can I do each day? This is gonna be fun, woo! That, that does not sound like something players would enjoy in the game. Time is important, but not so important that it deserves special game mechanics around tracking it and all of that. Sometimes dungeon masters like nerd out over game mechanics and making things all precise and mechanical and stuff like that. And they, and in their nerddom, they overlook the practicality of players simply want to have fun. Time-based events. Okay, I promised I would talk about this, so let's do it. <laughs> Time-based events are basically events that are planned to happen at certain times or on specific dates in the game world. For instance, in Valaki in Curse of Strahd, there was a new festival every single week that was designed to promote happiness in the town. Of course, the festivals didn't, and people got arrested for malicious unhappiness, but we'll just leave that aside for the moment. Now, for my players, when they were running that part of the game, knowing when those festivals took place and the names of those in festivals, in festivals? Festivals was an important part of that game at that point in time. The players had to consider when the next festival would take place as they planned out what they were going to do to resolve all the problems in the town. In my Sword Coast Guard game, a frost giant army was on the march, raising towns in their path. Now, it took that army just so long to get to one town, raise it to the ground, destroy it completely, and then march on to the next town. At the same time, Lord Paxton had told them that if they didn't capitulate with his demands, he would send his white dragon servant to destroy towns along the Sword Coast. These events were time-based and happening simultaneously, and the players had to consider the time that each would take, the damage that would be wrought by not dealing with them, and they had to deal with the th those threats and that time in their decision-making. Now, in this case, they didn't have time to do both because they were happening simultaneously in different parts of the world, kind of close, but not really. 
so they had to choose which one to go to over the other. Now, in this case, my players chose to deal with the dragon first, feeling it was probably the larger threat and could fly from one town to another quite a bit faster than the giants. And as a result, the frost giants raised, completely destroyed Rasalantar and almost all of its inhabitants. So when you track time and use a calendar, as I described, you can incorporate time-based events into your game and they can take your game to the next level. In the case of the dragon and the frost giants, I literally had tracked out how long it would take for my frost giants to get from one town to the next had it written out on my calendar. And then after my players took care of that white dragon and then traveled to go get take care of the giants, I knew exactly what the giants had already done, who they had already killed, and who they were about to attack next. And that's the sort of thing you can do when you're tracking time, when you have a calendar, and you're planning out these time-based events. Events the PCs know about. Now, some events the PCs, the players, will know about in advance. They, for instance, they knew the White Dragon would strike at that town along the coast, and they knew the Frost Giant army was on the march. However, they didn't always know when those events would take place. They knew the dragon would strike in a week, but how long exactly would it take the frost giants to arrive at the first town along their warpath? And they had to consider those things when making their decision. Now, behind the scene, I'd already planned out exactly how long it would take the frost giants to get to Rasalantar, and then to get to Red Larch, and then to the other cities along their warpath. And I knew when and where the dragon would be striking. So it was up to my players to choose what they would do first. They went after the dragon, as I mentioned, and I played out the movements of the frost giants in the background. And it turned out my players were not fast enough, couldn't do both in time. The frost giants sacked Rasalantar and were in the middle of sieging Red Larch by the time the players finally caught up to them. For events the players know about, you can simply play them out behind the scenes if the players aren't there for them. Don't postpone them and allow the players extra time to catch up. That ruins the entire purpose of having time-based events. You want to let the players feel the pressure of time working against them. It adds drama and excitement to the game. Consequences are good. But if I simply allow them extra time and nothing happens because of the giant's march, well then it's kind of like, well, we knew they were marching, but we managed to do both at the same time and there were no consequences, nobody got raised and oh, 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 okay. I guess it doesn't matter who we pick to go first because the game's always gonna work out in our favor. Events the PCs don't know about. Now, other events the players are not going to know about in advance. For instance, Strahd is planning to swoop down on Valaki and steal Irina away at a certain point. My Curse of Strahd players don't know that and they won't find out about it until it happens. I guess unless they're watching this video. Didn't think about that. Anyway, it's something I've determined will happen behind the scenes as part of the game. For events like these, you could change the time they occur because the timing is only known to you. Your players have no idea that it's even gonna happen. Or you could run them straight and not change the timing at all. For events the PCs don't know about, however, I suggest having the time-based events occur whenever they would be the most dramatic for the game. For instance, if my players decide to take a one day detour to check out the windmill where the three nice old ladies are running a lovely orphanage, I might have Strahd steal Irina away the day before the players arrived to Valaki. That way, they will know that if they hadn't taken that detour, they would have arrived in Valaki in time to possibly protect Irina. That will add drama and excitement to the game because Holy crap, they just missed Strahd. Don't forget to get the May issue of Layer Magazine and all the bonus magic tattoo content from the Dungeon Coach. Click that beautiful link to my Patreon page down below. Layer Magazine contains the Dungeon Master resources you need to reduce your prep time and run awesome games for your players. And finally, I wanna give a shout out to the following awesome patrons who help me create all the D&D resources I provide for the community. Wad P, Tristan B, Brett M, Adrian M, Florena E, Quinton L, Winkletuff G, Ken S, Tyler R, Sean S, Chris H, Average Mike, Kenny G, Kelvin J, Matt Tzik, Tar, Beer Gnome, Georgina C, Scott C, Nick T, Ian R, Joel V, Steve, Kathy S, Steve B, Henuace, Joseph H, Richard M, Generous Heel, Cody B, Mark W, Travis T, Jonathan W, Michael H, Particle Man, Michael S, and Dorian, Daniel S, Tristan S. If you found this video useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment for the algorithm down below. Let YouTube know that I don't completely suck. And until next time, let's play D&D.